Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to graph polar equations. We're going to graph polar equations using a table of value and plotting points. One of the things when we do this, one of our objectives, is to note the location at which the curves begin. And this objective isn't going to be explicitly stated or reviewed, but it's going to be embedded into the sample problems one and two. So pay attention to where the curves begin. We want to recognize symmetry of polar equations. We'll have three kinds of symmetry. We'll be symmetrical along the polar axis, formerly known as our x-axis. We'll also see symmetry along the line of theta equals pi over 2. And I kind of think of this formerly known as our y-axis from the Cartesian plane. And then finally, we'll have symmetry with respect to the pole or across what we knew as the origin. Some things you might want to have handy for this video, some graph paper, or uh, if you have polar graphing paper, that certainly would be helpful. A graphing utility, we're going to use the TI-84, and our handy unit circle uh, is going to be referred to as well in this video. And our first objective, let's take a look at a sample. We want to sketch the graph of polar equation r equals 4 sine of theta by hand. Now remember the sine function is periodic, so you can get a full range of r values by considering values of theta in the interval between 0 and 2 pi. So in the table below, we've done a lot of the work for you already. We've substituted 0 into theta into our, for, into our equation for sine of theta. And we know that the sine of 0 is 0, so 4 times 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so 4 times 1 half is 2. So we worked our way around the unit circle. The sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Multiplying by 4, we get 2 square root of 3, or about 3.5. Uh, if I remember correctly, 2 square root of 3 is also the square root of 12. At pi over 2, the sine of theta is 1, so 4 times 1 is 1, and so forth as we work our way around the unit circle. Now these negative values will be part of our symmetry issue that we'll take a look at. And remember plotting negative r values and where we plotted those on the, on the polar plane. And then finally we finish back at 2 pi. So we're going to plot these points. And as we do so on the polar plane, the gray here on our graph paper, uh, it appears that we have a circle of radius 2 whose center is at the point 0, 2. So our center is here, and we've got a radius of 2. And if we plot all those points in order, we would see uh, that we would start at 0 and then work our way around and plot our particular points. Some things to note here, that the sine curve is symmetrical along the line of theta equals pi over 2, or formerly our, our y-axis. It's symmetrical across pi over 2. Um, this is also of note because our sine, if you remember, our sine value is y. So that's something that's interesting, and I want you to make that connection that this is going to open along the, the pi over 2, or the, what used to be the y-axis. Uh, the coefficient on the sign happens to be our diameter of our circle. We Remember, we graphed uh, r equals 4 sine theta, and this happened to be the diameter of our circle. And since sine of 0 is equal to 0, this graph did begin here at the pole, and then we started plotting our points from there. And that's going to be important as well. In our second sample, we're going to sketch the graph of the polar equation r equals 6 cosine of theta. We can hypothesize from our previous sample the following things. The graph is going to be a circle similar to that of the sine curve. The graph is going to have a diameter of 6 or a radius of 3. 
and the graph will lie on the polar axis or what we formerly knew as the y or as the x axis because remember sine was y and it kind of was symmetrical on our y axis well cosine is x so it would make sense that this might be symmetrical along the polar or the x axis so consider your unit circle for locations of theta and use the corresponding values of cosine and then we're going to multiply by 6 because it's 6 times the cosine of theta. So when theta is 0, cosine is 1 but 6 times 1 is 6. So the cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. That simplifies to 3 square root of 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. 6 times 1 half is 3, and we continue that process as we uh, begin to build our table of values. The, these, all these values here come from our, our unit circle, and we're finding the cosine of pi, and the cosine of 7 pi over 6, and the cosine of 4 pi over 3, then multiplying it by 6 and getting these final values. So, you know, we have the the ordered pair of 0, 6, R, 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 and R theta. I actually have that backwards, don't I? So 6 and 0, because our ordered pairs are R theta. So our R is 3, our theta is pi over 3. So something to keep in mind, we've got these particular negative values so we need to think of uh, kind of our symmetry or our reflection and and how we plotted those points on the on the polar plane so I have taken the liberty to start plotting some of these so this particular one at theta equals zero now this one started out at six we didn't start at the pole and then at pi over 6, we had the square root of 3 over 3, which if I remember correctly is about 5.2, uh, about there. And then at pi over 3, we had a value of 3. So we are working our way around. At pi over 2, we had a value of 0. So we're down here. And we've got some different values as we plot our particular points and we end up at 2 pi uh, we end up plotting 6 again now some of these are reflections across because of the negative values but what we have here on our polar plane is a graph of a circle type figure that's supposed to be a circle on the polar plane I did take the liberty of putting this into the graphing calculator we need to make sure our graphing calculator is in the correct mode and our angles are all in radians so we'll go to mode and we're going to cursor down to radians and we'll put it in radian and you can see the one below we have a function parametric polar sequence we are graphing polar so we want to go down and select polar and enter we'll quit out of that one thing I want you to note though is next to the alpha key we have an X and a T and a theta and N we're going to use this key because our angle is is our variable is no longer X but our variable really is our theta so that's something to keep in mind as well so we'll quit out of that it looks like I'm in radian mode I'll go to Y equals and sure enough I've got my polar values here. Uh, I'm going to use R sub 6, R6. I'm going to use the 6 one. We were graphing 6 cosine of theta. So uh, my theta key here. Not sure what my window is. Uh, whoop. I'm going to change my uh, Y min down to like a negative 7 and my y max to 7 and my x's those need to be larger as well 
we go ahead and graph that. Looks like a, an ellipse or an oval uh, because you can see my scales are different here. Um, but if I had my scale set correctly and I adjust my window properly, we would get a diagram that looks something like that. So a couple things to note. The cosine curve is symmetrical along the polar axis. This is of note because our cosine value, of course, is x. The coefficient on cosine is, again, is our diameter of our circle, just like it was for sine. And since the cosine of 0 is 1 and 6 times 1 is 6, this graph begins at, uh, I think I wrote that wrong, at 6, 0 on the polar axis. Our directed distance r is 6. Let's take a look at symmetry for a moment. Symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. Okay, we're going to be symmetrical across that pi over 2 line. So our r values will say the same, but our theta values can be different. So our pi minus theta, which would be this particular value here, or negative r negative theta. So a couple different ways to represent that particular point. Um, based on our plotting polar points. We have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. So across our what used to be our x-axis, so our r theta is here, or negative theta, so r negative theta, or it could be negative r pi minus theta. So again, a couple of different ways to show that same point r theta. And then finally, reflection across the pole or symmetry with respect to the pole. Okay, our r theta is here. We can rotate pi. So we have r pi plus theta, or we have a negative r and theta. So again, two other ways to uh, show that particular point and that reflection across the pole. So that leads us uh, to some testing. Uh, ways in which we can determine symmetry or test for symmetry. So if we want to test to see if it's symmetric, symmetric across the line theta equals pi over 2, we'll replace r and theta with r and pi minus theta, or we could replace it with negative r, negative theta. If we want to see if it's symmetrical across the polar axis, we replace r theta with r negative theta or negative r pi minus theta. And then finally, if we want to see if it's a reflection across the pole, we replace r and theta with r pi plus theta or negative r theta. Exactly what we saw here in the previous diagram with our replacement values for r and theta are also listed there. So that figure is kind of handy. So we could determine the symmetry of our our original problem, r equals 4 sine of theta, by replacing r theta by negative r negative theta. We here we are testing to see if it's across theta equals pi over 2. So we replace our r and our theta with negative r negative theta. So we've done that here. And we see we come up with an equivalent value. So it is symmetrical across theta, the line theta equals pi over 2. Now when we check to see, uh, replace r theta with r negative theta, so we're checking to see if it's symmetrical across the polar axis, we see we do not get the same value as we started with. So it is not symmetrical across the polar axis. And then finally, we check to see if it's symmetrical across the pole. So we replace r theta with negative r theta. And again, we don't get the same value. So again, it's not symmetrical across the pole. Finally, recall that the sine function is odd, so that the sine of the opposite of theta equals the opposite of sine of theta. So test 1 does produce an equivalent value for sine. It would not produce an equivalent value for cosine. Cosine is not odd. Cosine is an even function where cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of theta. The cosine will be symmetric 
about the polar axis, as you can see here, when we replace theta with negative theta, we're going to get the exact same value. So for cosine, this would, would be our symmetrical value and would produce an equivalent value. So finally, at the end here, we just say that sine is symmetric with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. And on our coordinate plane, that's our y-axis, and sine is y. And the graph of r equals g cosine of theta is symmetric across the polar axis. Well, the polar axis on our coordinate plane is x, and cosine is x. So easy way to remember those and make those connections between the polar and the rectangular coordinate planes. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.